The rise in infections in Ontario being attributed to colder weather, people spending more time indoors, and lifting some capacity limits. Let's bring in Dr. Peter Uni. He is the Scientific Director of Ontario's Science Advisory Table. Dr. Uni, always good to see you here with us. And the key takeaways today from these projections, what do people need to know? Well, first of all, we're at the critical juncture now. It's uh, very difficult to tell where we're going exactly. Um, the, uh, there is uncertainty. And what is important is just that we didn't open up more. So we didn't lift the additional capacity limits in clubs, etc., which is a good first step. And now we just need to deal with the problem on a local level. And in addition, just make people aware of, hey, this is not over. We need to keep masking. We need to make sure that even more people get vaccinated and we need to use the vaccine certificates really wisely and consistently. Can we expect an upward trend through the holidays? Well, uh, it may be that we're going a bit upwards again. You know, we'll see where this is going. The point really is that we keep things under control and slow this a bit. We had, you know, an acceleration and uh, and we would like just to prevent this from happening and hopefully in the next few weeks, in the next two weeks or so, just flatten the curve. This would be the idea here. And it's a combination. It's basically just us going back to our behavior as it was before Thanksgiving. That would be helpful. Uh, including better masking, also in sports stadiums, cinemas, etc. Don't use drinks and foods to not to mask. Use of the certificates really just wisely. And again, just asking everybody to think about, you know, crowding as opposed to ventilation. If there's too much of a crowd in a room and the ventilation is not optimal, that's what is challenging here because the transmission here is most likely primarily airborne. I know you have said that uh, you've witnessed uh, personally, you know, uh, athletic games going on and, and you know, uh, in, in different uh, arenas as well as restaurants that may or may not be checking as diligently as they should for people's proof of vaccination, people getting a little lax with their mask wearing as we collectively let our guard down a little bit. Exactly. Look, on one end, we should just really be very proud of ourselves. As a population, we did a really good job so far. So compared with nearly every other place, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, we're doing actually still well. But it's a wobbly balance. And the point really is, if we get a bit better again and just do what we kept doing during the last few months, but just a bit more discipline with it, that will already be helpful. Also, the idea of mask wearing, and I mentioned this at the beginning of our conversation, uh, Dr. Tam, the chief medical officer, is talking about, number one, the importance of mask wearing, that we know, but also that we have to make sure we've got the right fit and the right fabric, uh, and your take on that, what that means exactly, because a lot of people might have thought we were wearing the right masks and we did have the right fabric and we were wearing them properly. Uh, your read on what this means in terms of a bit of a recalibration. Oh, I mean, I see a lot of people who are a bit all over the place with the masks, for sure, that's an issue. So what you want is a mask that fits well, you know, no gaps, basically. Uh, ideally, at least a medical mask or a two-layered cloth mask, three layers is even better, that has been washed already. And uh, the, the, just the fit, the fit, the goodness of fit is just really, really important. It doesn't mean, you know, that everybody needs to wear an N95 or so, not at all. The point is, if we have a mask that, is, is, that fits well, that has at least two layers or is a medical mask, this means that we reduce the amount of aerosols by roughly 50% and large droplets by 95 or 100%. And this makes a difference. Final question has to do with an authorization for uh, Pfizer shots for children under the age of 12 from, you know, 5 to 11. And I'm curious whether you think that is coming because right now Canada has a very high double vaccination rate, as you know, more than 75 percent of all adults. And I'm just curious what you think that means in terms of the children, how quickly it's important to start getting them vaccinated. Oh, I think, you know, one of the first points here is just, just to think about safe guards for schools that they can keep open for in-person learning. That's really important, first thing. Second thing will be there is relatively rarely only, you know, the risk of serious outcomes also in kids. We will protect them then also against these rare but serious outcomes. And third is it indeed will also contribute to the overall po uh, protection of the population. If we have here in Ontario, for example, 1.1 million children, 5 to 11, hopefully 80% get vaccinated relatively swiftly 
of course, this will afford a bit more protection for the population. All of that is important. Dr. Peter Uni joining us. Uh, he is the head scientific director of Ontario's science advisory table. Thank you, Dr. Uni, as always. Appreciate this. Thanks a lot for having me again.